Hi everyone, welcome to the series called RBI 247. I am Tanvi Kaur, your mentor for finance current affairs. In this very session, we pick up some important financial topics and we try and discuss them with the help of different questions. So before I start with today's finance currents, if you have not yet subscribed to our channel, please do subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can be updated about our upcoming videos. If you want to view the past sessions on finance current affairs for past entire year, then we have a playlist on RBI 247 where you can get access to all these sessions. So it's there on our channel. You can view those videos as well. Now talking about the free PDF of this session. So if you want the free PDF, please join our Telegram group. Link is in the description below. We provide all the free PDFs on that very group only. Now talking about first question. So this question relates to the preamble to the RBI Act. Okay, so RBI is preamble which highlights some of the functions of RBI. So I would like to clarify beforehand only that in today's session, I'm going to cover just one topic and that too in detail. So let's just first cover that topic, then we'll discuss the questions related to it. So recently in one of his speeches, our RBI's governor, Mr. Shakti Das, talked about the evolution of monetary policy. He talked about the role of communication as far as the central banks are concerned. So I'm going to discuss his that very speech in today's session. In this speech, he talked about how change is very important hai and does the monetary policy frameworks have continued to change over time. The kind of policy we used to follow earlier is not same now. So change in time ke saath change hona bohat zaruri hai. Just take an example of any business. Okay, suppose we talk about Nokia. It used to be a leader as far as the mobile phones are concerned. But uh, it was not able to adapt to the change in technology. And that's the reason why other competitors moved ahead and it failed on its strategy. Okay, so it's very important to change with the changing times, the kind of environment, the kind of things are being demanded by the environment, um, be it domestically, be it globally, you have to change if you want to succeed in long run. So is for the policies as well, the kind of policy which used to be followed earlier was apt for that kind of an economic scenario. But the scenarios have changed over time. There were various reforms. There are various problems which arise with existing system and they necessitate the change. Okay, so based on the problems in the existing system, some improvements are needed and so is the change. So, kaise monetary policy over time evolve hui hai? Is very speech mein unho ye discuss kiya hai. Then it's very important to communicate the kind of policy you are following, the kind of changes you are coming up with the larger audience, why any decision is being taken from RBI's end. RBI needs to notify about saying to the people. It needs to state the reason behind doing that. So all that is about communication, which has also been discussed in this very speech. So let's start his this very speech now. I have tried to simplify the things for you all and presented them in a more easier manner. So, सबसे पहले जो बात की है उन्होंने वो की है central bank के role के बारे में जिसमें major significant tool जो central bank use करता है जो RBI use करता है वो है monetary policy. Now RBI is the central bank of the country and being the central bank it has a lot of functions to perform. It needs to maintain the stability in the system, the financial stability, the monetary stability. It needs to issue currency. It needs to act as a banker to the banks, as a banker to the government. It needs to undertake various developmental activities as well. So the core function of RBI out of all these, one of the most important functions is to formulate the monetary policy. Monetary policy deals with the supply of money in the economy. Kitna money supply hona chahiye economy mein taki inflation bhi control mein rahe, growth targets bhi meet ho sake, there is enough money to, um, uh, enough money is earned by the people so they can demand more, there will be more production, more output, more employment, more income. So in order to ensure all this proper supply of money is to be initiated and that is done by central bank through its monetary policy. So central banks, which are the heart of the monetary or financial system, which are all decisions, 
using various instruments at their disposal. So, बहुत से options available है central bank के पास जिसकी जिसके through वो overall monetary और financial system की stability ensure करते हैं. The monetary policy is one such prime tool which further uses various instruments to ensure the macroeconomic stability. अब हम लोग काफी सेशंस मॉनेटरी पॉलिसी के ऊपर लेते आ रहे हैं मॉनेटरी पॉलिसी स्टेटमेंट में भी ये सब डिस्कस होता है कैसे रेपो रेट्स रिवर्स रेपो एस एल आर सी आर आर ऑल दीज आर दूल्स विच आर यूज बाई आर बी आई टू डील विद मनी सप्लाई इन द इकोनॉमी राइट सो थ्रू दीज पॉलिसी ऑपरेशन आर बी आई ट्राइज टू अफेक्ट द इंटरेस्ट रेट्स विच फर्दर हेल्प डिटमाइन दी ओवरऑल इकोनॉमिक एक्टिविटी दी प्राइजेस सो कहीं ना कहीं सब चीज़ों में लिंक है कितना पैसा इकोनॉमी में आ रहा है वो डिटमाइन करेगा कि कितना पैसा प्रोडक्शन में यूज होगा कितना आउटपुट आएगा कितनी इंप्लॉयमेंट जनरेट होगी क्या प्राइजेज रहेंगे इन्फ्लेशन तो नहीं हो रही ऑल दीज थिंग्स आर लिंक अप टूगेदर right so rbi tries to ensure price stability also and it also has to make sure that there is not much fluctuations as far as the output and employment are concerned so twin objectives hai monetary policy ke ek price stability maintain karke chalna and second is to ensure the growth as well okay so main focus central bank ka kya hai is policy ke through it is on fostering monetary and financial stability is financial system mein stability maintain karna aur sath hi sath maximum levels ensure karna of the output in the economy these are the main objectives ye inke preamble mein bhi highlighted hai if i talk about the preamble stated in the rbi act it talks about few direct roles of rbi few functions of rbi so rbi ka preamble kya kehta hai it says that it is expedient to constitute reserve bank of india to So, किस लिए रिजर्व बैंक ऑफ इंडिया का कॉन्स्टिट्यूट होना इंपॉर्टेंट है टू रेगुलेट द इशू ऑफ बैंक नोट एंड कीप द रिजर्व वाई विद इन ऑब्जेक्टिव टू इंश्योर मॉनिटरी स्टेबिलिटी सो बैंक नोट इशू करना और रिजर्व मेंटेन करके चलना ताकि मॉनिटरी स्टेबिलिटी इंश्योर हो सके दैट इज वन ऑफ द डायरेक्ट फंक्शन ऑफ आर बी आई एंड अदर देन दैट इट हैज टू अपरेट द करेंसी एंड क्रेडिट सिस्टम फॉर दफ द कंट्री टू इट्स एडवांटेज साथ ही साथ मेंटेन करना है कितनी करेंसी लानी है कितनी नोट्स विदड्रॉ करने हैं हाउ मच इज द नीड टू सप्लाई द मनी इन द इकोनॉमी हाउ मच ऑफ द क्रेडिट नीड्स टू बी प्रोवाइडेड सो दैट इट इज द कंट्री कंटिन्यूज टू फंक्शन इन एडवांटेज मैनर दैट इज द मेन फंक्शन ऑफ आर सो आगे चलने से पहले फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन डिस्कस कर लेते हैं बिकॉज इट विल बी आंसर्ड इफ यू हैव गॉन थ्रू दिस लाइड ओनली so coming back to the question we have to identify which of the following functions have been directly highlighted in the preamble so do hi directly highlighted cheeze hain pehla regulate karna issue of notes and keeping of reserves taki monetary stability maintain ho sake so this is correct second is operate the currency and credit system for country's advantage bank to bank and to the government is a function of rbi but it has not been directly highlighted in the preamble so first to have been directly highlighted so answer is option c ab hum aa jate hain hamare speech pe wapas remaining three questions are also related to this very speech but we'll discuss them at the end so moving on to the next slide what else he talked about so he has said that over time the priorities of central banks have changed डोमेस्टिक सैनारियों की बात करें ग्लोबल इकोनॉमिक सैनारियों की बात करें फाइनेंशियल डेवलपमेंट्स की बात करें सो ये सब चेंजेस होते आ रहे हैं इकोनॉमी में वेरियस पॉलिटिकल इकोनॉमिक थिंग्स आर आल्सो हैपनिंग सो बेस्ड ऑन ऑल दीज चेंजेस इट वाज नेसेसरी टू चेंज द काइंड ऑफ फ्रेमवर्क ऑफ मॉनेटरी पॉलिसी व्हिच यू वी वर फॉलोइंग जैसी टाइप का मनी सप्लाई हम पहले करते थे वैसे ही सेम आज की डेट में नहीं कर सकते इकोनॉमी के सिनेरियोस चेंज होते रहते हैं काइंड ऑफ इकोनॉमी जो इंडिया पहले थी और जो अब है सब चेंज हुआ 1990s में जो रिफॉर्म्स आए उसमें कितने चेंजेस आए उससे पहले इंडिपेंडेंस के बाद काफी चेंजेस हुए देन फर्दर इकोनो ग्लोबल फाइनेंशियल क्राइसिस के बाद काफी न्यू प्रॉब्लम्स आए सो ओवर टाइम वी हैव कंटिन्यू टू चेंज आर मॉनिटरी पॉलिसी फ्रेमवर्क सो लेट्स सी हाउ मॉनिटरी पॉलिसी हैज इवॉल्व इन इंडिया सबसे पहले हम बात करते हैं इंडिपेंडेंस के बाद के टाइम पीरियड की आफ्टर इंडिपेंडेंस व्हाट वाज द फोकस ऑफ मॉनेटरी पॉलिसी द फोकस वाज ऑन इंश्योरिंग द सप्लाई ऑफ मनी टू इंश्योर प्लान इकोनॉमिक डेवलपमेंट इन इंडिया सो जब हमारा इंडिपेंडेंस हुआ उसके बाद इंडिया का ऑब्जेक्टिव क्या था इकोनॉमिक डेवलपमेंट इंश्योर करना 
we needed planned economic development so for that there was a need to expand the supply of money in the economy provide more credit which can help meet the developmental needs so zyada se zyada development ke liye credit provide karna paisa provide karna that was the kind of monetary policies focus after independence okay so over time when government started working a lot for development a lot of projects need to be undertaken so government's expenditure were expenditures were more than the revenues it used to earn okay so government ke bahut zyada expenditure hote the bahut zyada deficit hua and in order to finance that deficit it was dependent on rbi so rbi used to provide the credit to the government it used to print more money in order to be able to lend to the government so this was the deficit financing kind of problem which was arising moreover there were many factors which contributed to inflation 1960s 70s mein kya hone laga inflation badhne lagi there were various factors there were supply shocks in the agriculture sector the global oil prices shocks were there in 1973 then 1979 then the bretton woods system which used to be followed what collapsed in 1973 Bretton Woods system में क्या होता था that uh, the currencies used to be linked to US dollars, which used to be pegged to further or represented in terms of gold. So then that system came to an end and the country shifted to floating exchange rate system. So in सब चीजों में जहाँ supply shocks हो रहे थे, price shocks हो रहे थे, inflation बहुत ज़्यादा थी. So in order to tackle that, what was the monetary policy? Uh, um, what was the uh, ideology of RBI as far as the monetary policy is concerned? It tried to control the credit in the economy. So, thoda bhot supply ke sector ko zanna hai, wo RBI ne control karna shuru kar diya. Selective credit controls and moral suasion was imposed. So, in the moral suasion, what RBI does? It exercises control on the banks that where they can lend, how much they can lend. Selective controls RBI imposed karne laga ki is sector ko isse zada amount nahi jana hai, is sector ko credit jana hi nahi hai. okay it restricted the supply of credit for various speculative purposes so price control karna zaruri tha isliye credit controls imposed kiye gaye this was the kind of thing which was happening so one of the problems which continued amid all this was that of monetization of deficit iska matlab kya hai iska matlab ye hai ki government ke jo excess deficits the wo unhe finance karne ke liye rbi se loans le rahi thi rbi se money print kara rahi thi taki RBI उनको फंडिंग दे सके सो दिस विशेष साइकिल वॉज कंटिन्यूइंग वेर द गवर्नमेंट इन केस ऑफ एक्सेस डेफिसिट वॉज डिपेंडेंट ऑन आर बी आई टू फंड फंड ओके सो अल्सोल्यूशन टू टैकल दिस प्रॉब्लम केम अप दैट वॉज मॉनिटरी टारगेटिंग सो आर बी आई ने फिर मॉनिटरी टारगेटिंग फ्रेमवर्क लेके आया बट लेटर ऑन दैट ऑल्सो प्रूव टू बी नॉट वेरी सक्सेसफुल दैट ऑल्सो फेल्ड एंड देन आर बी आई हैड टू कंटिन्यू विद सम न्यू फ्रेमवर्क So let's discuss this framework which came up in 1980s monetary targeting so here the supply of money was controlled by uh, focusing on certain monetary projections so kuch factors ko dhyan mein rakhte hue RBI ne kitna money supply karna hai economy mein wo determine kiya so the monetary projection was based on the level of supply or the level of supply of money in the economy by RBI was based on certain projections like the gdp projection the income elasticity of demand and the inflation rate kitna inflation hai kitna gdp projection hai kitni elasticity of demand hai in sab ke basis pe rbi determine karta tha ki kitna supply of money rakhna hai economy mein but this system was also not very successful when the reforms started in 1990 so 1990s mein various financial sector reforms came up okay trade related reforms came up then foreign capital flows started rising thodi open ho gayi economies foreign capital flows aane lage financial innovations started kafi nayi nayi innovations hone lagi and there was a shift towards market based financing so amid all this this monetary targeting framework was not that very successful okay ye jo framework hai it this very framework ensured a stable relationship between money between output between prices so it was not working well during 1990s so rbi shifted to a multiple indicators approach in 1998 so here uh, rather than being restricted to only few projections rbi shifted to various indicators which were taken into consideration to decide how much supply of money should be there in the economy so multiple indicators approach as the name suggests uses various indicators to determine 
सप्लाई ऑफ मनी इन द इकोनॉमी कितना सप्लाई होना चाहिए ये बहुत सी चीजों पर डिपेंड होने लगा लाइक द इंटरेस्ट रेट्स इन डिफरेंट मार्केट्स देन वेरियस अदर हाई फ्रीक्वेंसी इंडिकेटर्स वर आल्सो यूज जैसे कि करेंसी से रिलेटेड इंडिकेटर्स हो गए हाउ मच इज द क्रेडिट बीइंग प्रोवाइडेड बाय द बैंक्स हाउ मच इज प्रोवाइडेड बाय फाइनेंशियल इंस्टीट्यूशंस व्हाट इज द फिजिकल पोजीशन हाउ मच ट्रेड इज हैपनिंग व्हाट इज द एक्सटेंट ऑफ कैपिटल फ्लोस व्हिच आर हैपनिंग इन इंडिया इन्फ्लेशन रेट क्या चल रहा है एक्सचेंज रेट्स क्या है ऐसे कई सारे फैक्टर्स के बेसिस पे डिसाइड होता होता था कि क्या मॉनेटरी पॉलिसी रखनी है मतलब कितना मनी सप्लाई रखना है इकोनॉमी में बट दिस वेरी अप्रोच ऑल्दो कंटिन्यूड फॉर अ लॉन्गर पीरियड ऑफ टाइम बट स्टिल वॉज नॉट सक्सेसफुल आफ्टर द ग्लोबल फाइनेंशियल क्राइसिस सो वॉज रिप्लेस्ड बाय अनदर फ्रेमवर्क विच इज फ्लेक्सीबल इन्फ्लेशन टारगेटिंग विच इज फॉलोड एट प्रेजेंट सो देख लेते हैं कि क्या प्रॉब्लम रही एम आई अप्रोच में जिसकी वजह से हम एफ आई टी यानी कि फ्लेक्सीबल इन्फ्लेशन टारगेटिंग में शिफ्ट हुए there was global financial crisis okay and when that crisis happened this mi framework was uh, put up into question kyunki is mein growth slow ho gayi inflation bahut zyada thi so that very system was not working well so what was decided uh, a committee was formed by rbi an expert committee to advise them and that committee advised that the flexible inflation targeting system should be followed where a inflation tolerance band will be set and the uh, monetary how much should be supply of money should be determined based on that inflation target so aap sare steps le sakte ho aapko flexibility hai ki kitna supply money of uh, supply of money rakhna hai economy mein using different indicators but ye dhyan rakhna hai ki price stability na hamper ho okay high inflation ho rahi thi usko curb karne ke liye ye laya gaya that inflation should remain within 2 to 6% of band and if it is being maintained then various decisions can be taken from rbi and it has the flexibility so that the growth is also ensured and the stability is also ensured so jo hum kehte hain na ki maintaining the price stability keeping in mind the objective of growth wo hai is fit system ka target so cpi ke liye levels state kar di gayi that 4% plus minus 2 yani ki 2 se 6% ke beech inflation rakho agar aap rakh rahe ho then in the wake of all this you can take various steps you have that flexibility to ensure the growth of the economy so this system is being followed in india since 2016 and if we talk about the current scenario the pandemic scenario inflation has hit the high tolerance band levels okay but still rbi is having that flexibility to continue with the accommodative stance because it feels that this inflation is due to certain supply side shocks which will be uh, handled once the the economic recovery post pandemic comes back at pace so rbi के प्रोजेक्शंस है कि इन्फ्लेशन इन्फ्लेशन कंट्रोल में आ जाएगी और जब तक ये दो से सिक्स परसेंट के बीच मेंटेन है आरबीआई अपना कम्युनिटिव स्टैंड कंटिन्यू भी रख रहा है इट वाज एक्सपेक्टेड दैट द रेट्स माइट इंक्रीज बट एट प्रेजेंट ग्रोथ इज दी प्रायोरिटी कमिंग बैक टू द रिकवरी रेट वी हैड इज द प्रायोरिटी ऑफ आर बट नाउ द यूक्रेन क्राइसिस इज गोइंग ऑन एंड ऑल दिस कैन लीड टू अ लॉट ऑफ प्राइज इन प्राइजेस लेट सी वॉट काइंड ऑफ मॉनिटरी पॉलिसी डिसीजन आर टेक्स इन दपकमिंग मंथ ओके So, ये था हमारा मॉनेटरी पॉलिसी का एवोल्यूशन अब हम आते हैं नेक्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ द स्पीच पे विच इज रिलेटेड टू रोल ऑफ कम्युनिकेशन सो अगर हम पहले की बात करें कुछ डिकेट्स पहले की बात करें तो सेंट्रल बैंक्स सिर्फ आरबीआई की बात नहीं हो रही है सेंट्रल बैंक्स वर्ल्ड वाइड वो वेरी सीक्रेटिव दे वर नॉट डिस्कलोजिंग अ लॉट अबाउट वॉट एक्शन दे वर टेकिंग वाई दे वर डूइंग सो सो लॉट ऑफ सीक्रेसी वॉज मेंटेन but over time or over the years we have seen them going more a uh, transparent being more uh, providing more clarity to the people being more precise why they are taking any decisions and they are accountable wo apne decision ke liye answerable hai wo mention karte hain ki ye step wo kyun le rahe hain in fact this speech which i am talking about okay or uh, it's a, co- a communication from rbi's end about how they have changed the monetary policy over time okay then I take up uh, various sessions which relate to RBI's notification. So RBI अपनी हर notification में एक information देता है, एक message देता है that we are coming up with this new initiative. This was the need of the R. Why we are coming up with this step? So I try to simplify all those things for you and present them to, for to you. Okay. So RBI ये notify करता रहता है कि वो क्या decision क्यों ले रहा है, वो कैसे beneficial है. what why i am telling you a bit more about this this kind of approach i am following to communicate to you about the things which rbi wants to communicate to the people at large 
सो जैसे आर बी आई ये कर रहा है ऐसे सेंट्रल बैंक वर्ल्ड वाइड और ट्रांसपेरेंट हो रहे हैं दे आर डिस्कलोजिंग मोर इन्फॉर्मेशन टू द पीपल वाई फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल सेंट्रल बैंक हैव बिकम मोर इंडिपेंडेंट इन वेरियस एरियाज ऑफ ऑपरेशन दे अंडरटेक जितना ज्यादा वो चीजें कर रहे हैं उतना ज्यादा उनकी अकाउंटेबिलिटी बढ़ रही है और उतना ज्यादा उन्हें ट्रांसपेरेंट होना इंपॉर्टेंट है मोर ओवर इफ दे वॉन्ट दैट वट एवर डिसीजन दे आर टेकिंग दे एक्चुअली गेट इम्प्लीमेंटेड दे नीड टू इन्फॉर्म द पीपल बिफोर हैंड अबाउट दैट स्टेप सो दैट दे कैन क्रिएट सच अ मार्केट सिनारियो विच इज इन देयर फेवर सो अगर आप चाहते हो कि आप किसी ऑप्शन के साथ आ रहे हो लोग सब्सक्राइब करें तो आपको उसके लिए उन्हें टाइमली इन्फॉर्मेशन देनी होगी राइट सो सेंट्रल बैंक कम्युनिकेट टू द पीपल एज एन इंस्ट्रूमेंट ऑफ मॉडर पॉलिसी टू कंडीशन मार्केट एक्सपेक्टेशन दैट आर एसेंशियल फॉर इफेक्टिव ट्रांसमिशन अब कोई मॉनिटरी पॉलिसी टूल वो यूज करना चाहते हैं जब तक लोग उसके बारे में बताएंगे नहीं उन्हें पता नहीं होगा वो रेडी नहीं रहेंगे उस चीज को उसमें इन्वेस्ट करने के लिए उसमें सब्सक्राइब करने के लिए वो लोन रेस करने के लिए तो आर बी आई का जो अल्टीमेट ऑब्जेक्टिव है उस पॉलिसी को इम्प्लीमेंटेशन में लाना वो फुलफिल नहीं हो पाएगा दैट्स द रीजन वाई दी बैंक हैव बिकम मोर ट्रांसपेरेंट विद ग्रेटर अमाउंट ऑफ ऑपरेशन कमिंग इन टू देयर पावर okay but it's very important to understand one more thing that communication is a double edged sword communication ek double edged sword hai agar aap zyada bata doge to bhi problem hai confuse ho jayenge market aur agar aap kam information doge to bhi problem hai okay so bahut zyada volatility ho sakti hai ya fir uh, aapki information dene se ya fir बहुत ज्यादा satisfaction bhi ho sakta hai logo ko so it's like a double edged weapon i'll give you an example rbi has already said that i will be continuing with the accommodative stance as long as it's necessary to help economy to recover a pandemic ke time mein jab rbi ne ye dilasa diya ki hum support dete rahenge jahan jahan credit ki zarurat hai jahan jahan zarurat hai hum accommodative stance maintain karke rakhenge so it's like a uh, thing which is uh, satisfying the people they are satisfied that okay someone is there to take take care of our financial aspects okay so kafi zyada volatility nahi hogi stability ensure rahegi but think of a situation if tomorrow rbi comes up and says that Uh, now we are seeing a lot of inflation so from tomorrow onwards we are going to increase all the interest rates so suddenly rbi ne is ye information de di suddenly ab jab rbi ye information de dega to bahut zyada market mein volatility hone lag jayegi okay so uh, idhar se udhar investments ke flow hone lagenge people apni kahin se investment withdraw karke kahin invest karne lagenge unhe loans lene mein problem hone lagenge so a lot of volatility will be there so proper decision should be taken that how much information should be communicated when okay so isiliye kaha gaya hai ki ye double edged sword hai then moving ahead as to whether rbi communicates properly or not so rbi kafi cheeze communicate karta hai any decision which is taken it is taken after interacting with various stakeholders alag alag analysts ke sath economists ke sath researchers banks research institutions trade institutions sab ke sath communication karke sab ke um, view points consider karke hi koi decision rbi leta hai and it always tells that what initiative it is taking why it is taking and this shows that it is accountable it is more transparent now if i talk about the example of monetary policy only so there are different ways of, with which rbi communicates about the same first of all a governor statements come up regarding what kind of monetary stand policy stance they are going to continue with what policy rates have they decided upon then that, that is put on the rbi website okay so there are various publications like by monthly monetary policy report is there governor statement as i discussed the minutes of the npc meetings are put up the statement on development and regulatory measures comes up on the rbi website the statement mein hamesha discuss bhi karti hu monetary policy statement ke sath then there are various press conferences which are held where these governors these deputy the governor the deputy governors or other important uh, people of rbi come up with their speeches all such things are put up on the rbi website तो ये सब क्या है ये सब कम्युनिकेशन है आरबीआई के एंड में वो लोगों को इन्फॉर्म रख रहा है अबाउट ऑल द इनिशिएटिव्स इट इज टेकिंग नाउ टॉकिंग अबाउट वन लास्ट थिंग व्हिच ही हैज पॉइंटेड आउट इन दिस वेरी स्पीच इज दैट हाउ आरबीआई हैज बीन डिफरेंट फ्रॉम अदर सेंट्रल बैंक्स इन दैंडमिक पैंडमिक रिस्पॉन्स सो पैंडमिक का सिचुएशन चल रहा था एंड वी हैव डिस्कस्ड वेरियस डिसीजन टेकन बाई आर इन दिस रिगार्ड सो आर बी आई क्या पॉइंटर सामने रख रहा है ये कहने के कि इट हैज बीन वर्किंग इन अ वे विच इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम सेंट्रल बैंक 
ऑफ द सेंट्रल बैंक सो आर कैसे दूसरे सेंट्रल बैंक से अलग वे में फंक्शन किया है एज फार एज द पैंडमिक रिस्पॉन्स इज कंसर्न लेट्स हैव अ डिस्कशन ऑन गवर्नर्स व्यू पॉइंट ऑन दिस वेरी थिंग सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल ही हैज मैंशन दैट आर बी आई हैज अंडरटेकन वेरियस अनकन्वेंशनल मेजर्स देन जस्ट बींग रिस्ट्रिक्टेड टू कन्वेंशनल पॉलिसी मेजर्स अब अगर मनी सप्लाई बढ़ाना था इकोनॉमी में सो इंटरेस्ट रेट्स कुड हैव बीन कम कट टू जीरो सो दैट मोर एंड मोर मनी इज लेंट इन द इकोनॉमी बट रैदर देन यूटिलाइजिंग दोज कन्वेंशनल पॉलिसी मेजर्स वेरियस अनकन्वेंशनल मेजर्स हैव बीन टेकन बाई आर बी आई इट केम अप विद डी जीस एप्स इट केम अप विद टी एल टी आर ओज एल टी आर ओज एंड वेरियस इनिशियटिव इट यूज टू लेंड uh through the medium of banks to various contact intensive sectors to health intensive sectors so ye sari unconventional measures rbi ne use kiye hain along with conventional measures conventional measures ko traditional jo cheeze use karte aa rahe hain un tak restricted nahi raha hai rbi okay secondly the counter parties which have been involved in operations are only banks and all india financial institutions so the medium through which the liquidity has been injected in the economy is just the banks and all india financial institutions proper counter parties ke through hi paisa economy mein channelize kiya gaya hai thirdly the asset purchase program has been confined to central and state government securities which has not diluted rbi's collateral standards in lending so rbi lends okay there are repo operations which are there through which the money is actually lent to the banks which further use it to lend to others so for this the government securities are taken as a collateral so rbi ne usi cheez pe confined raha hai collateral leke hi loans diye gaye hain so that later on problems don't arise next is it has solely operated in the secondary market unlike other emerging economies which have relied on the primary market to finance the government directly so directly government ko finance nahi kiya hai secondary market ka use kiya hai it has used like it has used the banks it has lent to the, them asked them to prepare the loan book to get the incentive in order to lend further to the health or the contact intensive sector so secondary market operations government securities ke against loan lend kar dena these kinds of operations have been used by rbi which um, kind of thing has not been implemented by other central banks agar hum us ki baat kare wahan 30 year high pe pahunch gayi inflation so they have directly provided the money to the accounts of the people which was a kind of thing which should not have been followed because of which people had lot of money at their disposal and they started demanding a lot which led to a lot of inflation over there it continued with the accommodative stance based on the domestic growth inflation dynamics amid the current divergence in policy actions of central banks elsewhere so baki central banks ki baat karo if we take an example of us only it has said that it's going to increase the interest rates and uh, soon and other central banks are also taking such decisions but rbi is continuing with accommodative stance as long as it is necessary to uh, recover help the economy recover so abhi rbi ka target hai economy ko wapas us pace of recovery pe lana jisme wo pehle thi and then this fit flexible inflation targeting framework has been taken into the consideration and rbi is trying to maintain the inflation also and handle the uh, growth prospects as well but as i have mentioned the ukraine crisis and other such issues of rising prices and all of crude and all they are likely to pose problems to the price stability so let's see what kind of monetary policy rbi is likely to continue with with in the upcoming time period so ye thi unki puri speech ab hum discuss kar lete hain remaining questions so second question is which of the following monetary policy framework was adopted in 1980s followed by the inflationary concern in 60s 70s due to all these reasons so abhi humne discuss kiya it was monetary targeting framework which was implemented then coming to third question identify the monetary policy framework that recommends cpi should be the nominal anchor for monetary policy and suggest price stability within tolerable band keeping in mind objective of growth so ye fit jo flexible inflation targeting system hai ye kehta hai ki inflation bhi limit mein rahe price stability ensure ho aur growth bhi ensure ho so option e is the answer moving on to last question rbi as part of its monetary policy does communication through which of the following tools so alag alag way mein rbi communicate karta hai monetary policy ke bare mein one is through its monetary policy report its um minutes of the meeting and all second is rbi's policy statements third says press conferences speeches by the governor so all these are correct all these are ways of communication so answer is option e that's it for today's session with this i would like to end up this session i hope it was useful